this is the center of engagement on campus. Much more so, I think, on this campus than on some others. Uh, for reasons that have to do with the fact that students prefer to be here because this is a, still the place to be safe, to reflect, and to work quietly, and that isn't so easily to do, and easy to do in some other places. But also, students have a strong sense of ownership of the library, just as faculty do. And there is incredible diversity among students in terms of how they seek information, their preferences, and how they engage these spaces to do it. And they expect the spaces to conform with their needs. The same, incidentally, is true with other users, including faculty, who are changing too, incidentally, and they are also quite a diverse community of users. So our challenge is to know more about our users, to know more about their preferences, to know more about how they use not only the content resources, but the spaces and the tools and the entire environment, so to speak, to accomplish their work. So there's a great deal more science and a lot more art, I think, to running a research library effectively than it may have been a couple of decades ago. And that's what makes this, I think, very exciting. You know, there's a building over here we call the University Center, and with all due respect to the inhabitants of that building, that is not the University Center. The center of any university is its library. We are here to disseminate knowledge in the form of teaching. We are here to create knowledge in the form of research. The library is the central repository from which knowledge is stored, retrieved, deposited. You know, it is the core of our entire endeavor. I, I do a lot of work with first-year students, first-year graduate students, freshmen, new transfer students, and um, also veterans who are on campus. And I want them to know about the library. When you think of the top five resources on campus, the library would certainly be uh, probably even top three as far as places students need to go. So a lot of my classes and my work is introducing students, really walking with them over to the, the heart of the campus, uh, our library. So not only symbolically in terms of its physical placement, but then also just in terms of its placement in the middle of the academic community. The library is really at the crossroads of the entire academic community. Sciences and engineering on the east, arts and humanities on the west, a really key location in the center of this campus. One of the uh, functions that libraries serve in the university community is as a a focus as a meeting place, as uh, some I used to say this jokingly. I called the library a demilitarized zone, uh, which was in a sense that any whatever resource conflicts people might normally have been a party to in the library they don't apply. Nobody ever feels like the library is getting something at the expense of somebody else. Something that you put into the library, whether it's 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 money, whether it's resources, whether it's investigation, is something that pays everybody back. Well, I think the library plays an essential role for the humanities. We're still, we're, overall, we're a discipline that really still is very attached to books. We can't do research without it. That is our lab. Um, the sciences certainly use um, the resources as well, but for the humanities, we don't have a lab space. All of our research is done through the library or through archives. So um, it's, it's essential. Do you get a lot of questions in reference to like research papers and um, you know, like how to find a book? But um, I think that because of going with everything going online and the internet being so accessible, that they would rather decide kind of doing their search on their own. But you need that expertise from librarians that only librarians, I think, can give you. The, the room for more growth. Um, more study spaces that I think a lot of students are really excited about, um, more outlets and more comfortable seating and I just I think it's it's time for a renovation and I'm really excited to you know that this project is actually going to continue and move on. The students don't study solo anymore and you can look around any library and recognize that so whether it's groups of two, groups of three, groups of six, groups of eight Technology is also needed when they're doing group study. So we have to create the types of spaces where they can be doing something with a computer and that level of volume is not going to bother everyone else around. So whether it's something that's uh, uh, broadcast online or you know something that they're listening to that a teacher has recorded, 
that they don't necessarily have to plug in, and those are critical in a library as well. It, it, once again, it's just not about sitting down with a book anymore. Studying doesn't happen just in that manner. It's evolved greatly since the 1960s. The new library really is a game changer. So behind me, I think you can probably see this, uh, is the old library, one of the original buildings. And um, you know, it was, it's what was being done in that period, uh, the textile blocks and the brisole. The new addition is much more like the newer buildings we've built on the campus recently. It's a combination of sandstone, plaster, the tile roof remains on the low portion of the building behind me. Um, it really builds on the traditions of Santa Barbara architecture in terms of materiality, but in terms of its aesthetic expression, is a very modern, contemporary building. It's going to feel highly energized. It's a place, I think, again, that will express the fact that there's a lot going on inside. Just in general with the two-story portion of the building, it is going to be unrecognizable when it reopens. And once again, the big element there is natural light. So getting rid of the tightness and the enclosed feeling that you get as you walk into the library, once again, just because of the way it's evolved since it was built, nothing, it, it's common for libraries to do that. They keep on getting more and more and more compartmentalized as time goes on. So clearing that out, opening it up, creating pods for them, giving them back the areas that give them options between wide open reading rooms, small group study spaces, loud, quiet, active, and, and even just the ability to see through the building in so many ways. Just, I need to go there, how do I do that? And it's apparent. So wayfinding and all of that is just, it's going to be a completely different experience. So the new building is great and it will help us allow our students to stand upon the shoulders of the, who, those who went before and in turn I trust become the shoulders of giants for the future. This is a renaissance. This library is undergoing a renaissance. Uh, in spite of our challenges, in spite of our limited resources, in spite of all the challenges that research universities and their libraries have had to face in, in recent years, we are very optimistic because we know we have a mission that's worth achieving. We have an audience that is that not only trusts but is reaching out to us to lead them through the wilderness in terms of this incredibly complicated information environment. We're having a great deal of fun and I think the partnerships that we build now and in the future are going to, um, they're going to sustain this library and this university in incredibly rewarding ways going forward.